Well, hello again, and welcome to the garden. I'm shooting just a quick video on saving seeds from okra. And I wanted to show you a few things um, about letting okra go to seed. And uh, first off, this is Bowtie Dave. This is my garden. Uh, actually, this is my, uh, well, there's the strawberry patch over here. <laughs> um, this is my personal log of things that are happening in the garden and what I've been doing and kind of a time stamp for my personal logs and uh, some of you may have seen the video the third part of the video tour uh, from the raised beds and um, how we uh, pulled out and measured these okra that are on the ground right behind me they're huge I'll have to go back and see the video to find out how tall they were uh, but <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to show you, we're gonna cut these and then we're going to uh, break out some seeds and see what we got. Um, there's a couple of different kinds of pods here that I wanted to show you. And I wanted to show you what uh, a good pod looks like for collecting seeds. So uh, without further ado, let's get on to it. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. neighborhood. I've got car wash going in one direction with music and got another car going across the way getting cleaned up but uh, life in the neighborhood right? Um, I did want to I want to know if it's... can you hear those seeds shaking inside there? There's actually seeds in there and uh, so these are kind of green pods but they are going to have good seeds in them I'm pretty sure so we're going to be saving uh, a lot of these pods for seed and here in a little bit I'm going to shoot the rest of this video will actually be uh, um, saving these seeds. Now I do want to be careful this one is the pod that's the pod there that is really good and I want to in fact looky here since we shot the video this thing has started to split oh my goodness I'm so excited that's beautiful uh, I want to keep these pods separate. Um, the good ones, the ones I suspect that will be the best. Look at this thing. It is as big as my hand. But uh, I'm kind of a little curious as to how they grow. Get my hand out of the way. But we're going to save all these pods. And uh, these here are kind of pretty standard. Nothing special about them. Kind of hard to do one-handed. I always watch the other vloggers do this one-handed and uh, I fully understand. So these have sat out overnight. I am, oh, look at there. That one's starting to split. Oh, that is so exciting. Can you hear that shaking? Oh. Nope, that's just something black on there. You know what? I'm not going to separate these. I thought I was going to keep these separate, but uh, these are all just looking too fantastic. So I am just going to chop these up. Wow, that's a lot of pods. And each one of these pods have a lot of seeds in them. So we are going to have a ton of okra seeds this year. In fact, my uh, little bucket here is not even big enough, is it? Oh, that thing right there is just beautiful thing of beauty. All right. That is just amazing. Now oh, it's interesting. It's green on the other side. Listen to those seeds shaking though. Yeah. 
<laughs> there's just too many. I have 10 years worth of seeds here now. Oh, can't even get them to stay in. I think I have a, another couple down here to cut. Oh, there's one more. This one's kind of low on the totem pole, but I'm gonna go ahead and cut them. I'll end up double sewing these anyway. But all I really need if I'm double sewing is maybe 50 seeds or so. So there we go. How's that for a crop of, oh, there's one more, okra gone to seed. in and see how many we got. I'm a little excited. I'm more excited to see how much seed we got. Wow. Here we go. I counted 30 pods. Can you believe it? Um, 30 of these pods and in fact this is the beautiful one that's already starting to split and I picked it up and it just started spilling out seeds everywhere. Could not believe it. I, uh, I thought I was going to keep these this pod separate, but I don't think I'm going to. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these all together, and we'll uh, just have to see how everything grows next year, because I want to use my seeds next year for the crop. But this is the cool thing about these that are starting to dry. They literally just fall apart like this. And you take the seeds out, and it's... It's very simple. Uh, this is just, just amazing. Now, the thing is, you really do need to let these go to seed. You need to let them get past that fresh stage. They need to get to this dry, woody stage. There's no biting into these. These are just massively woody uh, cucumbers. And uh, <laughs> I don't know that there's any way to make those edible. But uh, anyway, there are three pods here in the whole collection, in the whole harvest that uh, we're splitting out. And these seeds look fantastic. I mean, they're not quite the size of a pea, but boy, maybe a small pea. They are, they are very large. Uh, and in fact, they may be larger than, well, no, in fact, I know they're a little larger because uh, these will dry and shrivel some. That's part of the process. Uh, they, the seed goes through, through its process and, and uh, uh, shrivels a little bit and becomes viable for planting next year. But yeah, 30, 30 pods. We're gonna have a boatload of seeds. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because um, as I said earlier in the video, um, when you've got your own seeds that have grown in your own garden, uh, particularly like in a climate like ours, uh, it's hot and humid, and these seeds will have acclimated to the environment here in the panhandle of Florida uh, so that they will be strong growers. They should be the best growers. Um, and I know some of these we actually got from MI Gardener, and uh, I like MI Gardener seeds. I have never had a problem. I've always been curious. They're in Michigan, and they have growers up there in Michigan. I've always been curious um, if the fact that they're growing up in a northern climate like that would affect their growing down here. Now, here's the interesting thing. I've grown a lot of MI Gardener seeds here in Florida, and uh, they... They grow just fine here. Uh, I've had very few problems. Um, the, uh, let's see, the pepper crisis of the past year. Yeah, no, I don't think any of those pepper seeds came from MI Gardener. Not through anything fault of theirs. I just uh, didn't order from them, uh, the pepper seeds from them, that's all. So anyway, oh, there's a possibly a bad seed. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, these seeds should be the best kind of seeds. Okay, now this one's a little more stuck. Okay, there it goes. They should be the best seeds because they grew in your, in my garden here in Florida. 
Um, they know what to expect. They, they, hopefully their genetics have uh, adapted to this hot uh, weather. Now, I don't know that all of the MI Gardener seeds are actually grown in Michigan. Uh, they might be grown around the country. So I, I'm curious, okra is a uh, hot, is a crop that likes the heat and the sun. And uh, I'll be honest, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, Luke over there at MI Gardener, he does really good um, selections and so forth and uh, uh, does a real good business. If you, if you, uh, if you uh, aren't familiar with MI Gardener, I, I'll put a link down in the index below uh, and uh, you'll be able to click through and see they have a store. Uh, you can go look at the about on their channel and boy, some of these are are uh, kind of hard to break open, which is why I have a paring knife. See if I can help it a little bit. Well, so I've got a bunch of pods here that are, st oh, see, these are all white. Okay, so, huh. Um, let me pull a couple of these biggest, bigger pods out and see if I can um, get them to, okay, see, these C's are all white. I don't know, the, okay, hmm. Well, now we have a good measuring. Yeah, see, these are black seeds, these are white seeds. I remember the uh, seeds that came from my gardener as being white. So, interesting. I'll have to, well, sounds like an experiment for next year. See which ones grow the best, the white ones or the, or the uh, black ones. Um, okay, so this one, these are kind of changing to black. If anybody knows why, which, what the reason some of these are black and some of them are white, uh, please comment down below. I'm very curious now. I'm going to, I guess I'm going to, it's kind of obvious which ones are which. Uh, so, you know, if you've been watching my videos, you know that these videos are my personal log of what's going on. So next year, when I look at these seeds, um, I'll be able to look back on this video and see, okay, what's the difference between the white and the black seeds? They're all the same, as far as I know. They just uh, sat longer on the, the plant. But I am going to have to let some of these sit a little longer and dry out. But I did want to just show you how easy, I mean, I'm just pulling these apart. Um, Remember earlier I was showing you how to tell if they're woody and bend the top over? Well, you can see that they separate out on those same breaking points and it makes it real easy to collect all the seeds in here. So, now some of these don't have, some of these chambers, there's chambers in here is what it is. Some of these chambers don't have as many seeds as others. So. This will be real interesting. I'm going to have to, next year, um, reminder to myself, as you look at this, David, uh, plant these white or whiter seeds, the whiter seed, the seeds that are more white. <laughs> Trying to say that clearly. Uh, let's plant those on one end. Let's plant a gradient of these from one end to the other and see which grow better. Uh, and I plant these early enough because we're here on the panhandle of Florida. I can actually plant these in uh, March. So um, this one's already split. Yeah, I'm going to let some of the, the rest of these pods dry a little more so they'll split on their own. And uh, we'll harvest these at a later time. Ooh, there's, oh, look at that. There's a bunch of black ones. That one came apart real easy. I'm not sure that didn't have uh huh. One thing about the okra is that um, I hadn't seen a lot of insect damage. So it leads me to believe that maybe it's, uh, it's resistant. And uh, as far as eating these, if you hadn't seen my other videos, uh, we eat these raw. They're great to put in salads. Uh, now, uh, Okra can be an acquired taste. 
I understand okra is not for everybody. And that's something you gotta realize if you're gonna try these for the first time. Um, they have kind of a mucilaginous texture to them. And uh, there's a few ways you can cook them that gets rid of most of that. Uh, our favorite way is fried okra. That is absolutely our favorite. And uh, when, you, when, when you have fried okra, oh, dip it in some cornmeal. And I don't know what Mrs. Bowtie does, but she makes some of the most incredible fried okra. In fact, it's, it's interesting because I grew up eating fried okra. My mom is a Louisiana, native born Louisiana girl. And her mom cooked fried okra. And I could literally sit in her kitchen, my grandmother's kitchen, and eat fried okra faster than she could make it. Because, uh, um, oh, I just learned to love it so much. And of course my mom made some fantastic fried okra too. And she's watching this. So thank you, mom, for the, for the lesson in fried oak in, in okra and what good okra is because, uh, I love it. Um, I married a girl who loves it. Mrs. Bowtie, uh, she loves it. And, uh, we just, we can't wait. And now it, it is funny because yeah, we harvested so much okra. We were tired of it, but you know what? I know that's just a temporary thing. Come late spring when we start getting okra again, oh, we're gonna be so ready for fresh okra again. So we do have uh, quite a bit of okra sitting in the freezer and we're excited about that. Uh, it does, we slice it up and freeze it. It freezes really well. Uh, we have fried it. Oh, something we did with it. Uh, our church has a, uh, has a hobo stew that we do every fall. And uh, basically everybody brings a package of some ingredient and um, it's it's uh it's always good the guy the fellow who does it wayne is a master at that kind of thing and and uh, so we actually took a gallon bag of okra and just dumped the whole thing in and then it it, it boils over a big campfire that we have we have a fire pit at the church building and and uh it boils over a bit, this big campfire for like an hour while we play games and do other stuff. And, and uh, I bring some hot sauce and uh, people put hot sauce in it. The people who like hot sauce will put hot sauce in their uh, stew, which really spices it up. Uh, oh, yeah. Um, I made some uh, southern pepper sauce, which is just, you take the pep, whole peppers and uh, fill a bottle and then stick some uh, vinegar, just distilled white vinegar in there. Uh, and it's supposed to be out of Tabasco peppers, which are great, of course, but I used Vitaly peppers. I used Thai hot peppers. Um, and oh, the, the Thai hot pepper sauce went fast. Uh, but in my opinion, Fatale peppers, which both of them are very hot. They're not super hot, but they're very hot. But the uh, Fatale has this really interesting flowery flavor in them. Ooh, there's a bunch of black ones. Has this real interesting flowery flavor that uh, infuses into the vinegar. Uh, really delicious. Really, really delicious. It, it's hot. Don't get me wrong. It is hot. If you if uh, hot stuff is not for you, I don't recommend Fatale because that is one hot pepper. I like eating hot stuff, but I have not had the courage yet to eat a Fatale pepper. So either that or the Thai hot. Now we've got new peppers this year and I have a feeling that we're going to have to have our friends from the previous video see if we can do a reunion uh, torture of uh, see of bread and and uh, my, uh, my other friend can make it. I'm, I have no doubt that Brett will come. But uh, anyway, Bobby, if you're out there, let me know if you're up for it and we'll plan it when you're in town. He actually uh, goes to college out of, out of town, not too far away, so he comes back frequently. He lives just, his house is just like right over there. One of our very close neighbors. But uh, anyway, so, there you have it. I guess I'm, 
I'm going through these and a lot of them just really are breaking apart real well. We have a real mixture of black and white and brown kind of halfway between the black and white and and uh, tons of seeds, oh my goodness. I mean, I'm looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seeds. And maybe a maybe a hundred seeds in each one I don't know maybe it's thousands of seeds but uh, I'm gonna spread these out on I like those uh, chinette plates uh, just to dry my seeds on they they spread out um, the, the, the thing about um, the chinette is they have a little bit of texture that fuzzy almost fuzzy texture to them and the seeds don't sit flat on the surface like the cheap plastic plates that are glossy especially like tomato seeds you do that on there they stick to the plate and you, you practically destroy them to uh, get them out of you know to get them say off the plate because they'll dry onto the plate is really not ideal so I'm huh. a lot of white seeds in a lot of these later ones but there's a lot of black seeds in the other one so We'll have to, next year, I'm going to pull out, we'll probably plant maybe 50 or 60 seeds. Uh, we had 20 plants this year. We had way more okra than we could eat during production. Of course, we preserved a bunch and uh, in, by freezing them, slicing them and freezing them. So um, I figure if we can uh, do a little better this year, We'll harvest, and the big thing about okra is you have to harvest frequently. They uh, they grow like mad. You'll see the flower. In fact, if you've watched my uh, Facebook page, you saw a video, or yeah, I think it was a video of a beautiful flower on these okra. Uh, just absolutely beautiful flower. And uh, it's, I think, is, is it related to the orchid or some, I can't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, you see the flower and a couple days later, you got okra ready to eat. So, and then you don't let it go too long or it gets woody like these are and they're not edible anymore. So you have to harvest frequently, which is a little bit annoying um, because you really have to stay on top of it. You can't let more than two or three days go by uh, without getting out there and picking them. And of course, uh, you saw in the video tour how tall these got. Uh, you can't harvest, I don't care how tall you are, you can't harvest them without a ladder. That's just all there is to it. Uh, so, you know, I had the ladder sitting out there for the longest time, just left it out there and uh, took it out on jobs only occasionally but uh, that was at least that at least made it easier for me to get out and and harvest the tall okra because it actually grows the okra at the top of the plant so uh, yeah there you go wow this is a lot of okra seeds I cannot believe it well I can believe it we have way more okra seeds than I will use in years, years and years. Now these do need to dry still, of course. I think I already mentioned that. They do still need to dry. Oh, let me make one more comment about um, these seeds growing to viability. Um, the first time I grew okra seeds, it was my first okra plant. We were in the apartment and I had six okra plants growing in a 25 gallon grow bag. Uh, if you watch my video tours, it's one of those larger flat grow bags that I have around. I still use those. But uh, anyway, so I was just very excited on that first okra and I opened it up and saved the seeds and the seeds were these little itty bitty things the size of uh, not much bigger than a grain of sand they were tiny and those were not viable those little itty bitty seeds are underdeveloped um, as far as seed saving they were collected way too early and were pretty much pointless i actually did a germination test and um 
I think one of them actually did something, uh, but I mean, it just barely germinated and, and immediately died. So yeah, uh, you don't want to harvest these too early, which is why I left these on the plant so long. Uh, they really have to develop. And, and you can see the size of these things are enormous. And so um, these are developed seeds. Did I get one down my, oh, I did. <laughs> Got one down my sleeve. Um, they are enormous seeds. Uh, the, uh, what I'm going to do later is I will uh, compare. I still have some of the MI Gardener seeds that I planted. And after these dry, we will, I'll post a picture on Facebook or maybe in the community here on my uh, YouTube channel as far as uh, the comparison of the size, which I suspect they'll probably be similar. However, these things grew enormous. I just, I still can't get over how enormous these pods are, which I have no doubt MI Gardener's people probably, and it's not actually MI Gardener's people. They have, they uh, support small farmers uh, all over to get their seeds. And uh, uh, it's a good kind. I really, I really like what I see about MI Gardener. So I've mentioned them a lot on this. There's no sponsor. I don't, I don't do any sponsorships or anything. Um, just places that I have dealt with and got product from and have enjoyed. Uh, like MI Gardener, he has a great YouTube channel. I've learned a lot from him. In fact, um, I'll see if I can. Uh, find the old video of Luke's at MI Gardener. Uh, he is the one from whom I learned how to germinate the strawberries that are the strawberries outside out here. Uh, so he, uh, he had a interesting little video, wasn't very long. Uh, talked to how, how he did it from seed, planted strawberries from seed that he picked up, picked off a strawberry from the store, which is what I did. I got a strawberry at Walmart and it was, I remember it was an organic package of organic strawberries. I thought, Ooh, this can be fun. And so I planted out a hundred seeds and ended up with out of a hundred seeds. Uh, and it's, it's a process to do, but out of a hundred seeds, I got four. <laughs> so, yeah, I have dropped another seed down here a little bit ago. Oh, two seeds. Ah. There we go. Wow, that is just an enormous amount of seeds.
30 husks of okra seeds. So I am very excited. That is just so cool. Yeah, these are the chinette plates, just standard chinette plates that I use. Um, we normally have some of them sitting in the kitchen for gatherings and so forth. And all I do here is just spread them out. I've got a couple of different places in which I can place these uh, to let them dry out. And that's what's going to happen to these. They will, they will uh, get set out for a week. They will dry out and they will shrink, shrink. So there's three plates of them. Uh, a little much on that one. And you want them to be lay out flat. You don't really want them to stack up. Uh, I currently have only three plates. These are close enough. Um, I will every once in a while, I will go out and shake them around a little bit. These will not stick to these chinette plates like they would, uh, well, I don't know that the okra seeds would stick to anything because they're, they're uh, so large. But um, anyway, I just use these for all my seed uh, drying. Uh, the only exception is actually the tomato seeds. And I actually sometimes will put them on parchment paper, which does really well. But these will get set out and uh, allowed to dry. So there you go, three platefuls of okra seed. So if you're still watching, uh, thanks for following along and uh, we'll continue with uh, other videos. If you have not subscribed to Bowtie Life, please do. We, pr we put out several videos a week, not quite every day generally. We did there for October, November, but not quite every single day. And uh, um, we, uh, well, <laughs> me with a lack of words. Does that ever happen? Yeah, subscribe to Bowtie Life. Uh, for those of you who have already subscribed, welcome back. And uh, please click the thumbs up on this video if you learned anything new or you found it at all entertaining or valuable. Uh, that lets the YouTube algorithm know that this is a useful video. It's not just uh, pointless. I hope it's not pointless. It's my personal log of what happens. And um, also uh, share on your Facebook page or your Instagram or other social media. Um, if you know people that, that might find this of value. So uh, without any further ado, I guess we're coming down to the end here and I got to get to work. I've got a little bit of painting to do still. So have a blessed day.